Tokatachi, a silent voice or the shape of voice, directed by Naoko Yamada. The movie starts out with Shoya Ishida on a bridge thinking about the River Styx shakedown, and he walks away from that bridge after remembering his childhood. Back in the day in elementary, a new honey named Shoko Nishimiya comes in his class and is like, Hey yo, I'm a sucker who can't hear nothing. I can't even hear Danielle Bregoli's roach voice in my ear walls. And the class is like, oh snap, that sounds like a blessing. As the year continues, Nishimiya starts to get bullied by Shoya and a girl named Naoko Ueno. And one day Ueno is like, oh snap, you got the new iPhone headphone janks. And she throws her earring in to Shoya, who throws it out the window. Out you be, I say, out you be, he says. How you gonna be like that, Shoya? And the bullying increases until Shoya rips out Nishimiya's hearing aids, making her bleed, which makes her have to leave the school. But even though the whole class was bullying her, they all turn their booty cheeks in Shoya's direction, and he is betrayed and outcasted until he reaches high school. And even after Shoya's mother apologizes, Nishimiya still prevents bad messages from being written on Shoya's desk, and then she leaves permanently. Until Shoya sees her again after becoming a reformed person in high school from his guilt of the past, and using sign language he gives her a notebook that he viciously threw in the water when he was younger. Shoya's like, I want to lick your hand. I mean, I want to lick that space between your index and middle finger all night and day. I mean, I want to hold your hand all night and day. That's what I meant to say. That's that's what, that's what that was it. And the shimmy is like, that doesn't sound too bad to me. But then again, I can't hear anything. And they feed bread to some koi fish. On a later day, Shoya sees a hammer lamb getting shut down by a sucker lamb. And he helps that man out. So later that day, the hammer lamb comes back to return the bike he lent and Shoya makes a new Hamalam, I mean friend, named Tomohiro. And they start hanging out like some laundry on a string. See the pun, see the pun there? That's, okay, anyway. Then Shoya tries to see Nishimiya again, but gets blocked by a new fling of fam, but gets helped out by Tomohiro. And while they're feeding Koi, Nishimiya drops the return notebook in the pond and slaps her soles together into the pond to get it, and Shoya follows. But that fling of food takes pictures of it and posts it on Twitter, which gets Shoya in trouble. But the fling of Fumpafu doesn't stop following Shoya and ends up passing out trying to get the reform Shoya angry. Shoya takes that Fipa Femp home, and the Femp Fuzi starts walking home by themselves and reveals himself as Nishimiya's little sister, which means that himself is actually herself. Now ain't that a twist in the pixie stick? But then the girl's mother shows up and smacks the holy ghost out of our boy Shoya. The next day Shoya asks Nishimiya who she wants to be texting. And she tells him her old friend from elementary, Sahara. So he tries to set that Jane up and ends up running into a Ueno. So he tries to confirm to see if it's actually a Ueno and fails. But later, Ueno finds him and confronts Shoya and Nishimiya about a bully befriending the victim out of her envious booty jealousy. Then later Nishimiya tries to tell Shoya she likes him with her voice only. But Shoya ain't no nada about nothing about what she be saying. But even though that happened, Shoya starts to open up to the other people around him and all the people from his past and present come together to start hanging out. So they all go to the amusement park but Ueno starts to get jealous and starts to ruin things for Shoya by digging up them old scars about bullying, but he denies her. Ueno takes Nishimiya away privately, and later Yuzuru shows Shoya how nasty Ueno is really through the hidden camera Nishimiya brought with her. So that means that Ueno ain't nothing but a snitch ass person. Then the built piece starts to dissolve like a piece of cotton candy and some mayonnaise. And the snitches from his old elementary school start flinging their lips around about Shoya's bullying past, ruining him socially. But then them suckers start to collectively beat down Shoya with the past, and Shoya breaks down and tells all of them off, and is made to be a monster. But then Yuzuru and Yoshimiya's grandmother passes away, which makes things a little bit more somber. Nishimiya and Shoya go on a trip together, and Nishimiya ends up apologizing to him for everything that has happened to him. 
Then Hashimi invites him to go see the fireworks festival with the family, and with the past behind everyone, everything goes fine. Then Nishimiya says she needs to get her homework done and goes home. And Yuzuru asks Shoya to get her camera for her, so Shoya goes to the Nishimiya home. To find Nishimiya committing bye bye forever action. So Shoya jumps for her and he holds on to Nishimiya like a soul clinging to existence itself. Shit, I would do the same thing. But after retrieving her safely, he falls himself into the water and goes into a coma. And all is dark and pretty hopeless for the story at this point. But it's all goony goo goo. Cause he wakes up and finds her at the Koi Bridge and he apologizes for everything he's done to her and asks her to help him live. And she tearfully accepts his request. Later, Shoya and Ishimiya go to the school festival together and Shoya reconciles his past grievances with the people of the past and present. Shoya is slowly finally able to lift his head up high and see the faces in the world around him, now realizing his own true value despite his past, to now live unconfidently through forgiveness and a newfound peaceful breath of absolution. The End